Howdy folks, Nathan here with Andre, and we're going to talk to you about, I know, sit down for this, the most badass off-road bus we've ever seen. Not a van, a bus. A proper bus. It's the Torsus Praetorian. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry? <laughs> what did you say? We'll get into the name in a minute, but Andre is going to be talking about his experiences with similar vehicles, and we're going to talk about this brand new vehicle, which... The base of operations is in Prague in the Czech Republic. Yes, and if you love overlanding, if you love off-roading, this is probably the baddest and the biggest machine that you could possibly want or need. Uh, so let, let's kick it off. How big is this thing? I mean, what are we talking about? We are talking about a vehicle that's, first of all, based on a MAN or MAN chassis. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, and there, most of you do, MAN stands for Machine Fabrique Osberg Nuremberg. I thought it stands for me. Or Manly Man. But the point <laughs> is, is that this company has been building trucks for years. They've competed in Dakar, they build load trucks, you name it. Dump trucks, everything. Everything. Yeah. And this company, uh, Torsus, decided to take the platform and using a MAN D0836 240 horsepower six cylinder diesel engine uh, that puts out about 682 pound-feet of torque. They threw that into a man chassis with man axles, everything underneath this bus or utility vehicle, which we'll cover in a second, is based on man products. Yes, but I'm a little surprised. Uh, so this is a European company, obviously you're using European chassis and yep. power, but 6.9 liters straight six, it sounds like a Ram truck to me. <laughs> uh, so I, I was expecting more power. Maybe like a like a 12 liter, you know, like American style. Well, that's the funny thing about this vehicle. So a lot of you are saying, well, what does it matter? It's not coming here. Well, actually, it sounds like it might be. Not only that, but they're looking at possibly doing production here in the United States. So Dude. is there a possibility that they'd put in an American sourced engine, something like a Cummins? You well, never know. In order to certify it here for the, you know, for the emissions and safety and other regulations, I think they might. Uh, but dude, uh, tell me, like, how, how tall it is? is it, will it fit under a bridge? <laughs> well, first of all, let's talk about the numbers that are easy to translate because everything here is in millimeters. And uh, sorry to say, guys. It's okay. I, I know millimeters. Yeah, but, you know, we, you know, most Americans out there want to hear inches, not mil, uh, millimeters. Uh, okay. Um, but I will tell you this, that this vehicle has a maximum axle weight of 28,000 pounds. So it can carry your family probably without a problem. <laughs> the bus uh, setup for this vehicle, and remember there's a variety of different setups, can hold up to about 35 people. Uh, but you can do RVs and everything else. Once again, we'll cover that in just a second. You won't believe how many different configurations. And that's one of the reasons why we thought we would check this thing out. And also a trailer. Yes, the trailer. I'm, I'm dying to tell them okay. about the trailer. Okay. okay. Yeah, so. So tell me the clearances. Like, what are we talking about here? Okay, so. We have, well, let's, let's, I want to keep on the technicals before we get to that. Um, a couple things here, 300 liter fuel tank. That's their maximum that's available. That's about 79 gallons, okay. which is pretty good for long range. And part of the purpose of this truck is to go into oil fields or into the forest or into the unknown. One of the other things about the vehicle is that you can configure it so the sizes can vary a little bit. So one more time. So this vehicle could be purchased by a company, like mm -hmm. you said, like an oil construction company. Or an individual. Or an individual. But more importantly, not only for carrying people, or if, you're, if your middle school is in the middle of nowhere, you, you could be used as a school bus, I guess. That's but, correct. But an Overland RV, too. That is correct. Yeah. And once again, we'll, we'll, we'll cover all the different uh, variations in just a second. So, now this does have a 400 millimeter ground clearance. Now, bear in mind that that ground clearance is at the lowest point of the axle. Yes. Okay. Maximum ground clearance can be in excess of over three feet for the lower section of the chassis, depending once again on the configuration and what this vehicle is going to be doing. So, it depends on what you're ordering. Dude, and I saw some brochure images of this uh -huh. thing. And, and we're going to show and those. And it has an awning, but the, the awning is not attached to the roof of the bus. No. It's attached in the middle. That's because this thing is freaking tall. And the reason it's so tall is because it's sitting on top of this heavy-duty truck chassis. Now, yeah. what this company did was they went, and from the ground up, they, by the way, everything's Linux. 
Everything underneath oh. is covered in Linux, which is well, that's really, a proper way to do it. Yeah, that really is a proper way to do it. So you're able to mean you know prevent rust and everything else over the long term. And on top of that, in some cases, the actual body is covered in the same material, which is pretty damn cool for us. It's got a brush guard in the front. It's got a winch option. I mean, this thing is insane. It, it, oh yeah, there's so many things. So let's talk All right, about. All right, let's keep going. The configurations, okay? Oh, by the way, what does the name mean? Oh, okay, so Praetorian is basically a high-level, high-ranking Roman, kind of a general, and or, or someone of that standing. What do you mean Roman? Like uh, our boss Roman? No, not our boss Roman. I'm talking about like Roman legions. Oh, so. or like ancient Rome? Ancient Rome. Oh. Okay, let's talk about the various configurations because this is what's so cool about it. All right, mining bus, ambulance, fire truck, Motorsport. Now, the motorsport one, by the way, is really cool because that one actually gives you a, like a little control center in there and room for two motorcycles in the back plus a service bay. So it's like a support vehicle, basically. Maybe even Dakar, right? Uh, well, it could be very well Dakar, but check this out. I mean, if you look right here, um, there we go. So oh. here's the control bay. And then here's where you put your motorcycles no and everything. This is so cool that you can get this pre, you know, like just right out of the thing, boom be able to hold that stuff. This is just an example of like all the different versions that they have. Overland RV, you want to see that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, please. Let's uh, see Overland RV, guys, because you, you, you're going to love this. We've been teased long enough. Here we go. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, does that say TFL? No, that says Torsus. Yeah, Sorry. good luck in getting one of these. Now, we will talk about prices in just a sec, because I okay. did find out what the base price is, but I'm pretty sure it's for the shell model, which is basically uh, nothing on the inside. You have to equip it. Okay, so let's go on just a couple other, <laughs> many others. So they have Police. as Yep. Utility Safari. Uh, recovery truck, and then we go from there to MP vehicle, it's a multi-purpose vehicle, uh, surveillance, cargo cab, cargo triple cab, ski bus, that's something that could work here in Colorado. Yeah, ski bus. Expedition vehicle. Now bear in mind that obviously in some cases it's the same thing where they just add extra lights or some extra you know grills and whatnot. Um, what is offensive? An what is an offensive? Have a look at this. This is kind of interesting. So first of all, you get this really cool. Um, oh, that's offensive. Urban camo, and that looks like something that you. Well, would this put, is like a SWAT vehicle. It, of it, course. <laughs> look at it that way. Oh <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, I'd rather have that as an overlander. This is scare the hell out of people. Look at that. What, airless tires? Airless tires. How cool is that? Now, finally, wanted to talk about this. And the cool thing is, is that the overall theme of it is very similar to the van. So it can either be used, according to the Torsus, uh, either as a crew area like this, where you can sleep up to, I believe, six people, or it can be used for cargo. There's a lot of video information out there based on what beauty shots and you know off-roading and everything else, but actual details about the vehicle, not as many as I would like, but we will talk about price in just a minute. Now, Andre has had experience in other vehicles that are similar. Yeah, so here's the thing. So MAN chassis you mentioned mm -hmm. is a big, big like semi truck sized chassis very hardcore and i've driven a couple of vehicles the one in utah mm -hmm. with plan b supply guys that was almost when when i drowned a humvee <laughs> that was you remember that that was epic so i'm gonna go a little bit slower this time and then just gun it coming in. Water's coming in. Water's coming in. Um, I'm stuck. Uh, it's full. This uh, Humvee is full of water. 
uh, but I also dr almost drowned myself. Uh, but uh, they also have the Stuart Stevenson chassis. This right. is basically the latest military vehicles that U.S. military uses and some other uh, country militaries uh, use. And it's basically a replacement for the Deuce and a Half, right. which means basically kind of a, like a five-ton or a 10-ton vehicle, big, major stuff. So here's the thing about driving one of those on the street or for recreation purposes. You have to remember, military use, usually slow-moving, you know, kind of loud. <laughs> so, so what companies like Acela do, so uh, that's the vehicle I tested in Texas. Right. And here I'm going about 60, getting a little bit faster. And when you gotta get to your location quick, deploy fast. This is the way to do it with a highway tire pressure. Fully inflated, you can go fast. Um, what that company is based in Montana, actually, and they work with uh, dealerships uh, chains in Texas because, you know, uh, for high water rescue vehicles, because you need lots of ground clearance, right. lots of water fording capability, you know, up to, um, you know, four feet of water fording capability or more, depending on configurations. Right. Um, they re-gear those vehicles. So basically, you look at the axles, massive axles, right? But they put different differentials in there so you can actually reach 70, 75 miles an hour because otherwise, a vehicle like this, I'm not sure about the Taurus's maximum speed, but that's usually like a 45 mile an hour vehicle. Right. That's not good on a highway. And this engine is not very powerful, but I mean, I think it's meant for durability and other purposes, right? Fuel efficiency, durability. Right, over the long term. Yeah, and then the next thing is uh, how loud it is. <laughs> usually military trucks are very loud because they don't have a lot of insulation. You know, they're not built for comfort. They're built for utility and durability. Mm -hmm. So a company like Acela, you know, add sound deadening, add carpet, add all these things. Which Torsus does as well. Yeah, and the Torsus appears to be fully, like, fully equipped so I'm wondering about starting price now. Ah, okay, well before we get to that, one thing you guys should know is that um, in terms of the axles, locking center diff, two speed, and locking front and rear axles, they well, are... You kind of have to have it in you this You really vehicle. have to yeah. have it in this vehicle. Starting price is about $158,000, 140 euros. Obviously that fluctuates based on the euro. Though. Okay. That is not bad if you consider the fact that there are a lot of bus companies here in the United States that turn regular buses into four by four buses that hold about the same amount of people for about a hundred grand. Yeah. So, and those aren't really purpose built, so to speak. They, they didn't start off as a four by four hardcore. Uh, yeah, and, and a great example of this is a, on a smaller scale is the new Mercedes Sprinter chassis. Mm -hmm. And we've also had, uh, had an experience driving one of those which was actually a Transwest Summit Adventure van, right. which means still a four-wheel drive Mercedes chassis, mm -hmm. which is already a very tall van. Yes. And then you put, you know, uh, RV equipment into it, you know, sink, kitchen. Make it much heavier. Uh, yeah, make it heavier. <laughs> and we took it on, um, I took it on near Bun School Trail, near Ironclads. It's a unique experience because it's capable. The, mm -hmm. the vehicle is moving, but you have to be mindful of trees, you know, hanging down in Colorado. Hell, satellites, that thing's so tall, you're going to hit aircraft. Yes, and it's the same thing with this. Yeah, right? this if you're thinking really tall. about taking this into the forest, it's probably not the best. But if you're going across deserts like Utah, Nevada, maybe some areas in Colorado, some open spaces, um, that's great for this vehicle. But dude, 158,000 starting price, look at things like Earth Rummer. I mean, those are million dollar vehicles. Right, in some cases so, they are. So, yes. I mean, you, you already are off and running with an entirely set up, off-road, absolute badass vehicle. So, uh, to summarize, this company is expected to be selling these vehicles in the United States soon and possibly even building them here. So these are two very important points, meaning, of course, we're going to try to get our hands on one. Yes, yeah, so Torsos, if you're watching and listening, uh, please uh, contact us. Um, ask at tfltruck.com. We would love to uh, come out, show it, review it, whatever. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this, this new vehicle and some of Andre's experiences. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.